Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to be taking a look at the GS-108B version 3 switch from Zycel. Wow, that was a mouthful. Keep watching to find out why you might want one. Okay, so today we're going to be taking a look at the Zycel switch. This is the GS-108B version 3. And this is a network switch. Supports gigabit features and also has hardware quality of service. Now you're probably thinking, what is quality of service? And why do I need it? Well, quality of service for a network switch is actually really important, especially depending on your type of usage. Now, if you are streaming or um, transferring large documents, video files, whatever it is around your personal network or home network, or even a work network for that matter, then quality of service is actually quite useful. What it will do, it will prioritize packets that are being sent from one computer to another based on whereabouts on the switch you're actually plugged into. So let's say, for instance, my use case scenario. So in this particular room where we are, where we do film the mics unboxing videos and also do our live streams, which you can check out if you click on the subscribe button and click on the chime button and you'll be notified when there's a live stream. Anyway, getting away from that, in this room, there's three PCs, sometimes four when we're doing a stream, there's a laptop also. Now, obviously when I'm streaming, I don't want there to be any interruptions on the network. Now, if Kath's PC over there is actually trying to send a file somewhere, or maybe my other desktop video editing PC is uploading some footage to YouTube, then you want to prioritize your traffic so that the stream runs perfectly, but your data still gets through on the other devices. So that's where quality of service comes in. This will prioritize certain ports, which are plugged in, and give those the utmost treatment on the network. So when the bandwidth starts getting saturated, it will prioritize packets. So essentially, it just makes things work better. I've probably not explained that particularly well. I will put a link in the video description to how the difference between hubs, switches, and routers all work out, so you can kind of work out in your own mind what is going on. But essentially, the difference between this as a switch than a hub Years ago, we used to have five port hubs or eight port hubs, and you'd have it in a home network or in an office, and you'd have everything plugged in. Now, what a hub will do is a hub will take in a packet of data from the PC, which is intended for another PC, but instead of just sending it to that PC, it will send it to all the PCs. Most of the PCs will reject that data, and the one that actually is supposed to get it will accept it. But what that means is all of that data is being bombarded around the network and saturating all the bandwidth. A switch uses hardware to actually look at the IP address or MAC address of the actual device itself and actually route it to the correct device. So there's a hardware lookup table actually built into the switch itself, which doesn't need to be managed. It does it all for itself and it will basically make sure that the right data goes to the right machine first time and without bothering the other PCs on the network or devices on the network. So that all makes sense. Hope it does. So let's take a look at the box and then we'll take a look inside the box and see what we actually get. So as you can see from the packaging, it's a pretty small compact. This is an eight port switch. There is actually a five port version if you wanted to as well. Um, you can connect up to eight devices obviously on this. And it, like it says on the front, it supports quality of service and actually has bi-colored LEDs on the front. So if you're one of those people who wants to actually see what's going on in the network, you can check out. So essentially if it's got a green light on it, it's running at gigabit speeds. If it's an amber light, it's running at 10, 100 speeds. With me so far, fantastic. On the back of the box, it goes into more detail about the ports and also some of the specifications, which I'll be showing on the screen now. So hopefully some of that makes sense to you. So let's take out the box and see what we actually get. So this is actually a new experience for me. I've not seen one of these before. I've not even used uh, Zycel before. Now they've been around for a long, long time since the very, very early days of the internet and uh, networking and all that kind of stuff. So you may not have actually seen the brand before, but they have actually been around a long, long time. So anyway, in the box, we get our instruction leaflet. And we get the switch itself. Now the switch itself actually is a really nice looking unit. It is an all metal construction. So very nice, very solid. And as you can tell, very, very well made. It's a kind of a brushed aluminum effect on the front. And the rest of it is kind of like a, just a silver effect uh, over the metal. You've got ventilation holes on both sides. So allowing airflow through. Again, this is a hardware switch. So there are components inside there which will generate heat. So ideally this wants to be in a semi-ventilated area. Uh, it's not entirely necessary, but as with most things electrical, if you keep them ventilated, they generally tend to last longer. Uh, on the top, as you can see, you've got the Zycel logo embossed into the top, which is uh, quite a nice little touch. 
And on the front, as you can see, we've got the LED status LEDs. There is actually a plastic or a film over the front of that to protect it. Actually, we'll leave it on for now. So you've got the Zycel logo, you've got a power LED. Next to that, you've got your four, I would say regular port LEDs. And next to that, you've got two medium and two high priority. So these are your QoS priorities. So you've got three levels. So you've got regular, medium, and high. So any devices plugged into the high or medium will get priority traffic wise and bandwidth wise over any of the devices plugged into the other four. So if we flip this round to the other side, you can see the ports. And again, they've replicated that on the back. So their ports are numbered one to eight. And as you can see, five in six are registered as being medium priority, seven and eight are registered as high priority. So in my use case scenario, I would probably put my streaming PC, uh, which is behind me, and also possibly the laptop into the two high priority ports. I'll probably put my video editing PC and CAF's PC into the medium priority ports and then all the other accessories and PCs, printers, all that kind of stuff, I'll just put into the other four ports. Also other things, network devices, uh, TV devices, all that kind of stuff. Again, if you wanted to, if you're using this in a media center setup, then you could do the opposite. So you could possibly have your uh, PC and your streaming device into the high priority ports and then things like your TiVo box or whatever it may be, you can put them into the normal box. Now the normal box isn't reduced in speed in any way, it still will get the full gigabit speeds and actually supports uh, 2000 megabits per second. So bi-directional, 1000 megabits is gigabit speed, so you can get it in both directions, upstream and downstream. You get the general idea. Essentially, this is designed to make life a little bit easier and to hopefully make streaming or file transfers a little bit easier. Say, for instance, this is in a room where you've got a NAS box, for instance, a network attached storage. Now, essentially, you're going to want that on your high priority because there's going to be probably a lot of people trying to access that data, potentially all at the same time. So you want to give that priority. So if the network's starting to get a little bit saturated, it will give priority to your file shares. So if you're video editing over a network or something like that, it's still going to work smoothly. On the bottom of the unit, you've actually got holes for wall mounting. So if you want to wall mount this, you can do, but stick it on the wall. There's also little cutouts and inside the packaging here, we've also got some rubber feet, 3M rubber feet. So you can stick those on there. So if you've got it on a desktop or wherever it may be, it won't go sliding around all over the place. So what else do we get in the box? We also get a power adapter, which hopefully isn't gonna be a, a massive, horrible, ugly thing. Now, it's uh, pretty much what you come to expect. So you've got a barrel connector and a three pin plug. Obviously, if you buy this in a different uh, location, then you'll get a plug which is suitable for your location. So two pin, three pin, four pin, whatever it may be, you'll get that in the box. Uh, that is all we got in there. And pretty much that is all we need. This is the star of the show. This is what is gonna do all the hard work, all the heavy lifting on your network and hopefully make things a lot better. Now, I'm gonna be replacing this with my existing I've got a really old uh, 10100 five port switch from I think it's Nextlink or something. It's about five, 10 years old. It really does need replacing. And more recently, as the internet speeds have increased and also the bandwidth needs of the network have increased, I'm finding myself more and more waiting for files to be transferred across the network or getting slower network speeds. So because the rest of my network is all on gigabit, this was the final link in it. So this is gonna be my upgrade to the network. And again, this at the moment costs around about 18 pounds, which is, Pretty much on par with the Netgear alternatives, uh, which is I've also bought, which you can check out in the video up here. Essentially, it's going to do the same thing, but the one thing that is really good about this, the standout feature, and if you've stuck with the video all the way through to the end, this is the bonus feature. Zycel offer a lifetime warranty on this. So if for any reason anything goes wrong with it, it fails, power supply goes, whatever it may be, they've got so much faith in their products, they will give you a lifetime warranty, which I think is fantastic. And being that Zycel have been around for so long, I can't see that being uh, an issue with a lifetime warranty. I think they're going to carry on going as long as uh, hopefully the switch will as well. So there we go. There's been the Zycel GS-108 P version three. I've been Mike. This is Mike's unboxing reviews and how to, and hopefully we'll catch you in the next video or live stream. Thanks for watching.